Thank you so much for joining me. I am so excited about my latest STEM resource that I couldn't wait to share it with you. Whether you are a STEM teacher who has used STEM resources in your classroom before and you're looking for more things to do, or you haven't tried STEM yet and you want to, maybe you've heard about Maker Monday or STEM Friday and you think, yeah, that's a great idea, but I have no idea where to start. Uh, maybe you want something that your kids can do independently, either your early finishers or something that you can work into your math center rotation. This is going to work for you too. Um, the easiest way for me to show you this resource, which I'm calling STEM Mats, is to just dive right in. So I'm going to flip the video over to the workspace and show you what this is all about. So here we are. This is a STEM mat. You can see that it is made up of a couple of spinners. For this activity, you will need the stem mat, obviously, a pencil and a paper clip for the spinning. So you'll spin the paper clip. This one landed on the rectangle. Um, I find it handy to use a marker so that your students can keep track of what the spinner landed on. Um, then you spin the other spinner. You can spin again if it's on the line. Um, we'll say this is six inches and place our marker. So for this challenge, the student would build a tower that has a rectangular base and a minimum height of six inches. So you will need the building bricks, um, stem mats, and then optionally, um, you can also use the recording pages that I've created. Um, that, that helps kids think about their design in a bit more detail. So there's quarter and full page. Um, these are great for pre-readers. They can draw their ideas on the back. And then when they complete a challenge, they can just color in the challenge they completed. If they're using the writing mat, um, they can put their ideas at the bottom and write about what they built. For the writing one, I've included mentor sample sentences so they can follow those um, <clears throat> that helps guide them through the writing portion. So the way this works is that even if two kids are working on the same exact mat, they're going to end up with something totally different. Um, and one reason I really like that is that sometimes there can be a little bit of competition or comparison or even taking a peek at other designs. So everyone has their own problem to solve and they can also repeat the challenge a number of times because depending on what they spin, the design criteria will be different. So this was the tower challenge. There are several other challenges, so let me show you a few others. Um, this is a real fun one. Um, this is design and build a staircase. So you will spin for which object fits on the step and the number of steps in the staircase. <clears throat> a paper clip had to fit on this one and it had eight steps. My son did this one. He really liked this challenge. Um, it was a little bit different from other STEM challenges we've done in the past. Uh, this is another fun one. It's um, design and build a famous landmark. This is the world landmark mat. I also have one that's just for US landmarks. So. <clears throat> this one is a pyramid that had to be at least two inches tall. So the other recording page I have included in the set, which I don't have nearby right this second, is a Venn diagram page. And the kids will do the challenge and then spin one of the spinners again. So then they'll need to ask themselves if the initial design meets the new criteria. For this challenge, imagine you kept the pyramid spinner, but the other spinner um, you spin again and now it says five inches. Well, guess what? <laughs> now it's not going to meet the criteria. So your students would have to build it up to meet the new criteria. So like I said, it's very simple and easy to learn how to use. Once your kids learn how to do this, they'll want to try all the challenges. This is another one of my favorites, especially for your K kids learning their CBC words. This is one my son um, worked on. He spelled the word pet, which was fun because it actually came out to be a real word. It could be kind of funny for them when they build a gibberish word. Um, so it, this is the simple mat. So the letters are going to be in straight lines, which are easier to build. There's another mat 
um, with letters that has more challenging letters. So for instance, is an R is going to be much more challenging to build with building bricks than something like the T or the I or the L or the H, where those are all straight lines. This one's a little different because it's a build a person mat. Um, the criteria specifies the position and the height of the person. So this can be interesting because a sitting person that's three inches tall will actually be a much larger person than when it is standing and three inches tall. So this is a lot of fun. In addition to um, this classic color bricks, I have all the mats and decor in um, light pink, light blue, green, purple. So all the mats come in those colors as well. You can either use both or choose which, which one goes best with your decor. There's also um, an engineering design process graphic that helps remind your students of the steps that they are taking. If you've done challenges before, you're likely familiar with these steps. So this is the ask, imagine, plan, create, and prove. Um, these are STEM mats in a nutshell. If you have any questions at all, um, please let me know. I'd love to talk with you more about them. I'm, like I said, I'm really excited about these mats and I hope you are too.